there. You can get a picture of Tucker up there. <laughs> no, because you might ask me a question I can't answer. I would do that. Yes, you would. <laughs> you could be the clerk and I could be the customer. There's no need to be afraid. It's not going anywhere. When you sit with other people and talk, most people talk about their children and what they're doing. And if you don't have kids and you have a dog, you talk about the dog mm -hmm. and their antics and all the things you do with that dog. Hey, go eat your dinner. Go ahead, eat your food. Go. Eat your food. Hello. Hello. You got Tucky. Ate it very quickly. Oh, yeah. Is that better for you? Is that make you? If you're busy. You are the manager of Global Pet Foods. Yes. It's a pet store. You sell treats, food, yes. all of the above, basically. Um, you, you probably see a lot of customers that come in who are very dedicated to their pets, right? Yes. They treat them like a member of the family. Yeah. We have one customer that will do anything for her pets. She buys three or four toothbrushes at one time. Wow. <laughs> Brushes their teeth every day, combs their hair every day. They are basically her life. Yeah. As far as like even finances go, the bills that some people have after leaving the store are significant sometimes. Ridiculous. They yeah. want to feed their pets the best food that they can. Yeah. Kind of how they would feed themselves. So money is exactly. sometimes not an issue. They just need the best for their pets. Mm -hmm. They're not cheap. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of main, maintain, maintenance, I guess you could call it. You got to have their shots done. You have to have, you know, their haircuts, like I said earlier. You have clothing to a certain degree, you know, mm -hmm. keep them warm outside. And so, yeah, they're, they're costly. But well worth it. Definitely well worth it. Mm -hmm. Pretty much from the instant I looked at him, I decided, well, that's my dog. Why do you have him? Right. And within, I spent probably two hours there that day just sitting around playing with him, getting to know him. Mm -hmm. And then went back the next day and spent the entire afternoon and wouldn't leave until they gave me paperwork to start, you know, applying to adopt him. Right. And we've pretty much been inseparable since then. He's somewhere between my best buddy and my kid. So funny. He's been trained. Hey, come here. When you come home after a stressful day at work or a stressful day at school, you walk in the door, well, there's the dog usually where you're ready to greet you. Mm -hmm. Unconditional love, as they say. And they don't know what kind of a day you've had. However, they do sometimes feed on your, your emotions and they kind of help you to relax and to decompress. It's, 
as I've told many people, there are many times I wouldn't have made it through the day if he wasn't there looking after me. Mm -hmm. So yeah. yeah, it goes both ways. Well, yeah, you take care of them, and in return, they give you companionship and oh, and love. it's completely unconditional. Like, oh, absolutely. I mean, say wolf. Huh? Say the good one. Huh? Outdoor voice. Huh? There you go. <laughs> oh, he's Oh, that's a chintzy one. Bang! Oh, Good boy! He didn't want to uh, leave for a while. <laughs> oh, no, the bum! No, belly! Boy! I know! Oh my gosh! Two at once! Take team! Two at once. <laughs> what a cutie. I had another retriever uh -huh. and he had passed and I was not getting another dog, but it just, the house is too empty without mm -hmm. uh, having a dog in it. Plus my husband works night mm -hmm. and uh, also keeps me fit and makes me go out. parents sat me and my sisters down and said that we needed to have a family meeting. Now, Russell wasn't really doing very well at this point. He wasn't eating, he wasn't getting up, just laying down all the time. He didn't really want to go outside, he had to go to the bathroom. And so they basically told us that we were putting him down that day. It was one of the hardest things I've ever had to go through. It felt like losing a family member. There's this grieving period that you have to go through and people don't really talk about it. It's a, it's a really odd experience. You have so much sadness and you've lost such a big part of your family. Like any other family member, you were living with them basically all year long, every day of your mm -hmm. life. They're, they're there. You don't spend all the time together like you don't spend all the time with your child. Same idea with the pet. Yeah. But you see them every day, pretty much. So when you lose them, it's mm -hmm. it's a hole that you have to, yeah. have to fill or just... Get, get used to not having, having. Mm -hmm. yeah people that are like oh well you can talk these people talk about their animals like they're their kids and it's like mm -hmm. well if they don't have kids it's fills it the is. same spot exactly in that yeah. you're a hundred percent responsible for mm -hmm. them they have no say in what goes on exactly you're and responsible and to feed them walk yeah, them to make sure they get their exercise exactly. like whether they're healthy or not whether mm -hmm. you know all of that stuff a dog all my life. I used to go down the street to other people who had dogs, never cats. I always stuck with the dogs. Anyway, I had always wanted a dog as a kid. Rob and I went out and got that dog and I brought it home. He could do no wrong. It didn't matter what he did. The dog would lie by the carriage every day. On those days, you put your babies in the carriages and mm -hmm. they stayed outside all day. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. how things have changed. <laughs>